Conversations that count is a four-step process for building highly effective conversations. Uh, classroom sessions, the whole uh, model of what is going to uh, be behind the conversations that count. You have the context setting, then you have the exploration, and you have convergence, and finally leading to commitment. At the heart of all this is authentic listening. Let's look at how the practice of authentic listening enables real quality conversations. Authentic listening is not just uh, the spoken word, it's also the not spoken word. It's not just the verbal communication, it is a lot the non-verbal communication. As you know, when you are conversing with somebody, the, the gestures, the posture, the tone, the facial expressions, all these convey the feelings and attitudes and beliefs that underlie behavior of not just others whom you are conversing with, but also how they relate to you. And how is authentic listening different from typical listening? I think very important to make this distinction. When you see authentic listening is really when you talk about uh, a conversation where you are giving respect for the potential of the other person to also solve problems, suggest solutions, listening to understand diverse ideas and perspectives which may have missed you uh, and therefore listening to everyone and to giving them the importance, giving them the respect and ensuring that you distill all their ideas and perspectives. And why is authentic listening so important? I mean, how does it really matter in terms of uh, an organizational context? Well, for one, it enhances the data for making quality decisions. It also builds relationships with the people you are conversing with. It energizes and empowers others, increasing employee engagement. And believe me, this is the most powerful element about authentic listening. And of course, it enhances productivity. Here, I'd like to give you an example of some of my own life's lessons which were learned. When I walked in to Harir about uh, in 2004, uh, the organization was virtually, you know, at the point where it would have probably closed down a year down the line. And we had problems of the unions, we had problems of environment, we had problems in terms of plant operations, in terms of yield. So what I did is actually got together about 90 BGNs and above and sat with each one of them on a one is to one session trying to understand from them exactly what they thought was happening at Hari and what was good, what was not so good, what they thought were the challenges for the unit, what they thought were things which we were completely blindsided to. What was this really an example of? It was really an example of listening, listening to people. And what is most amazing in this whole exercise was the fact that many of the people whom I met, they had never even walked into this part of the office block. And I think that was a very point, very, very sensitive uh, moment, uh, even in my own learning at that location, as to how important it is to uh, build alignment, how important it is to listen to the voice of all our employees and to understand where they are coming from. So I would say that when we are doing this, we also need to check our own listening styles. We need to check whether our own beliefs and assumptions and make a shift if it's required. And if we deploy this technique without a change in attitude, the shift is actually pointless. The attitude is what is most important. And we make a choice to do authentic listening in every conversation because we know what is the power of listening to people genuinely. I promise to practice authentic listening in my conversations to understand others better and respect them and respect their views and ideas and suggestions. My question is, how about you? How are you going to listen in future?